Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Kelly. We're doing 6.3 today. More modeling with equations. Remember when Sully did modeling in 5.4 and he brought that picture of Brust out? Oh, that was, that was good. All right, so what we're focusing on today is being able to write the equation. I'm not going to focus on the solving equation so much because we just did that. We did solving in 6.1 and 6.2. So I'm going to warn you, the solving part, I'm going to go quickly. I'm going to assume you know how to do that. We're going to work on the writing the equation part. So we have two that are like review. We just need to translate these into a nice equation so we can solve them. So let's read the first one. Twice the sum of a number and 11 is four. Find the number. All right, so twice the sum of a number and 11. So I go right into this part, the sum of a number and 11. So the way we can write that, here's a number, here's 11, Here's their sum right there in the middle when you add them. And we need twice that sum that is all going to equal 4. Okay, now as I said, I'm not going to focus on the solving part, but you know what I would do to solve this? I would distribute because we just learned that and distributing is fun. This will all equal 4 and then you could subtract 22 from each side, right? So if I do that, what do I get? I'll get a negative 18 and then we divide by 2. I know I skipped a step there. I skipped a step. You should be okay with that. Start being okay with me skipping a step. Minus 22, minus 22. All right, let's go to the next one. Six less than the sum of twice a number. That's so much, so much reading. This becomes a reading class. So we need six less. This means I'm going to have to subtract six. And the sum means we're going to have to add again. Twice a number, that's like two times n, and three times a number. That's like three times n. This is all equal to 39. All right, so let's try to build all this. We have twice a number and three times a number. We need that sum first. So I'm gonna call that 2n plus 3n. That is the sum of twice a number and three times a number. I'm gonna put it in parentheses just because it says sum and I know I wanna add those first. But I need six less than that. So six less than this. So I'll subtract six from it. And then it should all equal 39. There, we're done. How about that? Well, we're not done solving, but we're done writing. So 2n plus 3n. I'm going to clean up that trash. Anything about Bruss, he taught me. We're going to clean that trash up. This is a two-step equation. We add 6 to both sides. What do you get when you add 6 over here? A 45. And then how do you solve this? You divide by 5. So then n equals 9. All right? Remember, we're focusing on the writing part. Make sure you show all your steps there. That is the first two examples here. Now, I'm going to get to one that's brand new. It's called, this is actually example two, the sum of three consecutive integers is 153. The sum. So we need to know what each one of these words means. So the first thing, sum, that means we add. You all know that. And then the next one, consecutive. Now, what consecutive means is that the numbers come one after the other, one after the other. So let me give you an example. Seven, eight, Nine, those are consecutive. Let me give you another example. Negative 12. What's next? Wrong. Negative 11. I know you thought 13. I know you thought 13. That ain't right. Negative 11 and negative 10, right? These numbers are going up. These numbers are going up. So how do you get to that next number if they're consecutive? The key is we're always going to add one. So I made a little box right here for you. Always going to add one. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to let n represent the first number. And then how do you get to the next one? It's n plus 1. And how do you get to the next one? It would be n plus 2. And then however many you need, you just keep going. n plus 3, n plus 4. So for this problem, the unknown value is the first. We're going to say it's the first integer, right? So if n is the first integer, then we're going to let n plus 1 be what? the second integer, the second consecutive integer, but I'm saving you some words there. And then lastly, n plus 2. That's going to that's gonna represent our third integer. So now we've defined all three integers, n, n plus 1, n plus 2. I know that their sum, right, their sum is 153. So let's add them all together. n plus, the next one's n plus 1, plus n plus 2, that all has to equal 153. Well, now guess what? We get to clean up that trash. What? Notice all those ends. We got three of them. Three ends plus 
the one and the two, we're cleaning that trash up. That all equals 153. If I subtract three from each side, I'm gonna get three N is going to equal 150, right? And then I divide by three, and I'm gonna get N equals 50. Done with that problem right there. What's an equation? Oh, I did it up here. Hey, look at that. You can write that down there if you want to. <laughs> now I tell you, right? Oh, we forgot the units. We don't have units in this one because they're talking about integers. But we do have to make sure we answer the question. And the question was, um, I gotta go all the way back up here. Find each integer. I need to go all the way up there. So n equals 50. We need to write out the other ones. n plus one, that would equal 51, right? And then n plus two, that would equal 52. So here are the three integers, 50, 51, and 52. Thank goodness we found those. All right, example three. Okay, anybody that knows Sully, we're going on to number three. Anybody who knows Sully knows that he loves LeBron. So he sets up a store and he sells shirts. Basically, the shirts claim that LeBron's better than Jordan, so they're all false. But anyways, suppose Sully recently had a sale and took one-fifth off of each shirt that he sold. So he has a price, and he's going to take a fifth away. Okay, that made Mr. Brush. Brust purchased a shirt and it cost him $32. What was the original cost of the shirt? So to model this, ah, this is crazy. I'm gonna let, I don't like using S, but here I will use S. I don't like it because it looks like fives, but I will use an S here if we're careful. So let's write down, let S be the original cost of the shirt. And then next, all right, so he has the cost of the shirt, that was S, but then he took away a fifth of it, right? He took a fifth off. So. There's a five, here's an S, be careful. And all of that when Mr. Brust bought the shirt was $32. Well, guess what? Now we have our equation, we can solve it. We're gonna combine like terms. We're gonna clean up that trash, but there's fractions, but that's okay. This is like one S minus one fifth S. That's gonna be four fifths S. You gotta be careful. So scared with fives and S's. Now to solve this, let's multiply both sides times five. These will cancel. We're going to get a 4s on the left, right? And that will equal 32 times 5. That'd be 150 and 10. That equals 160. And we divide by 4. We're going to get s equals 40. And the unit here, we always got to think of that unit. It says up there in the problem that it's dollars. So it's $40. All right? Not bad. We defined the variable. We solved it. We modeled the situation. Now, the last one I'll do and then you can try one. This good old rectangle problem. We've done a lot of rectangle problems. So the width of a rectangle is four less than. So I'm gonna go like this. The width is four less than the length. So let's let, let's let L represent the length. And that means that the width is gonna be four less than that. So I'm gonna call it L minus four. That makes sense. This is four less than that. That's, that's L, so that's L minus four. If we wanna find the perimeter, we need to add up all the sides around the outside, but remember I taught you that trick, we can use the distributive property. I need two L's and I need two of the widths, which is L minus four, right? And this all has to equal 168 feet. Ooh, I don't need the unit yet. Let's keep that unit off. But now guess what we get to do? we get to distribute that two to each one of these. So this two L is chilling plus, we get a two times L when we distribute, minus eight. This all equals 168. Two L plus two L, we're gonna call that four L. Minus eight equals 168. We gotta add eight to each side. Y'all know that. Draw that line, they cancel. So that four L comes down, four L equals 176 divide by four and we're going to get an l i'll put it over here this l is going to equal 176 divided by four that's going to be what 44 now 44 what this is in feet so it's going to be 44 feet but the question asks you to find each side of the rectangle all right each side so this side here l that's going to equal 44 but the width is L minus four or 44 minus four. So that's gonna be 40. That is example four for you. Man, that was tough. So now with number five, I want you, don't deny it. 
because I know you really want to try it. Number five, read. I'm not even gonna read it to you. Read the question, and then try to do it. It's just like that Sully T-shirt one above. They're very similar to the T-shirt one. This is about Mr. Brust and his break dancing club. Pause the video and try that all by yourself. Okay, time to go over. I'm gonna start by letting P equal the cost of the pizza. Or you could use C, I guess, too, but I'll use P. P equals the cost of the mini pizza for Brust. So the cost of the pizza, one pizza for Brust. And then it says he's gonna sell it for a quarter more than he bought it for. So he's gonna add a quarter more of whatever it used to be, whatever that pizza used to be, the cost of that pizza, and it all equals six dollars we know because that's what mr bean bought it for so we have a nice equation here i told you it's like that shirt one except this one's not subtracting it's adding so we're just gonna again clean up that trash we're gonna add those two together this is one whole plus one fourth that gives us five fourths so five fourths p is gonna equal six i know we can just multiply both sides by four now right so four on this side four on this side they're gonna cancel out here we're going to get 5p is going to equal 24, and this is going to be an ugly one. So let's divide it out, and we're talking about cost. So instead of a fraction, I think a decimal would be better here. So what is 24 divided by 5? When you figure that out, we get a nice decimal of 4.8, right? That's what Siri told me when I asked Siri. Here's the thing we're talking about money, so that's really $4.80 fractions wouldn't be very helpful here so we're gonna have to go with our decimals and let's let's do a little check to make sure it makes sense so he sold it to Bean for six dollars four dollars and eighty cents that means he made a buck twenty on it that seems about right that's pretty good I bet you guys didn't know he'd break dance right that's it for modeling so give it your best shot try to do them all by yourself and then check them on the answer key and if you have any questions then ask your teacher this is Mr. Kelly in K-Town remember it's nice to be important more important to be nice see ya